Hi everybody and welcome to my studio today. On this video I'm going to show you how to repurpose a couple of pieces of furniture. We're going to do one on camera. I'm going to uh, tilt my camera down so you can see the two pieces that I have done. This one here is an old foam table and I have painted it with um, Deco Art uh, chalky finish paint. Uh, in the color everlasting and then I glued a couple of I decoupaged a couple of pieces of scrapbooking paper on here and then painted a design. Um, this is just one to show you what you can do with a piece of furniture. Um, the bird and the words are a stencil on my website and then I just painted a branch and a nest on there. Pretty easy thing to do. We've all painted branches and nests. So um, this one was done with chalky finished paint and it turned out great and I will tell you how I did this one in the video but the video is mostly about this piece of furniture right here, this table and we're going to spray paint this one. This one has a lid that opens. Both of these tables are very unique tables and um, that's why I bought them and I've had them for a lot of years and been wanting to paint them up for a while. So we're going to go out to my husband's shop. I'm going to show you how to do this particular table. And um, I'll tell you how I uh, finish the other one out. But the video is all about this um, table out in my... and welcome to my husband's shop today. Uh, I'm outside in his shop. I'm going to show you how to repurpose a piece of furniture. This one I have already done, so I wanted to show you what I've done to it. Um, I have painted this with just Deco Art chalky finish paint in the color Everlasting. And you can apply it either with a regular brush or with a, a dampened foam roller. And it's going to take at least three coats to cover this wood. Before you paint it though, you need to sand it with 220 grit sandpaper, okay? Wipe your sanding dust with a damp cloth and then dry it off with a dry cloth. So that's how you prepare it. I'm going to show you how to do that on this table, but I wanted to show you this table, how it turned out. I decoupaged some paper on here and then painted a design on it. So we're going to work on this one here and do it similar to this, except we're going to spray paint it instead of painting on with the chalky paint. So I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see all of this table here and since we're spray painting we don't need the roller and stuff. We will need our other stuff. So this particular table, this one that I just showed you was an old phone table. This one, I don't know what kind of table it is, but it has a, an opening with a storage inside of it which is rather unique. So I'm going, it's, it's hinged in the back, so I'm going to take the hinges off. I'd already loosened the screws because I want to spray paint the hinges black. Now if you don't, if you want your hinges to stay the color of the table, then you don't need to take them off. You can just spray paint right over them. But you still want to clean them a little bit. So I'm going to take these over here to this side and we're going to zoom in right here. Here so you can see what I'm doing because I have my table set up on a piece of cardboard to catch the overspray of the spray paint. So I want to paint my screw head so I'm just taking an awl and poking some holes for the screws in here and I'm just going to put my screws down into this cardboard so I can spray paint them. I'm going to paint them black. I'm going to wipe down my hinges and lay them over here. You just want to kind of remo remove the dirt and grime off of them. Now if you're painting with chalky paint, you can paint these hinges with some like multi-surface paint, some deco art multi-surface paint. That would work just fine for these. And I'm going to move my tools out of the way. So now we can take the top off of this table. And I'm going to show you how to sand this table. So I've got my 220 grit sandpaper here. And all we want to do 
the surface is really rough already. It's got a lot of scratches in it, but we just kind of want to take off like the top layer of the varnish, and because this table is so old, it won't take a whole lot to do that. So you're just gonna lightly sand the scuff up the surface so the paint will adhere. You really don't want to see any shine left on the surface. The shiny part is still the finished part and it will keep the paint from adhering well. And this has a lot of gouges and scratches in it that may still show up when I spray paint. So if you don't want to see that, then you need to um, sand it to where those, where you can't feel them. Then you're going to wipe off the sanding dust. You want to do all the sides. You can kind of see how shiny it is there. So when I wipe it down, it won't be near as shiny. And if you're going to do both sides, you'll want to sand both sides. I think I'm going to leave the inside possibly just the wood color. So I'm going to set this down here. And so with the table part, you're still going to do the same thing. You're going to sand the sides and the legs. And the legs, if, you, if you've got just a piece of sanding paper, I have mine on a foam pad that, that is bendable, that hangs onto my hand so I won't lose it. Um, just scuff up your legs. Round legs, you just put it around it and go around it like this and scuff up that finish on there. You don't want to leave any shiny parts. I know I've already said that, but sometimes you have to repeat things for people to catch, catch it. So just do this all the way. And this top edge right here, um, I haven't decided if I'm going to paint that. If I'm going to leave the underneath of the lid this color, I may leave this top edge this color as well. So depending on your table, you'll have to make decisions on how you want it to look. Now, after we spray paint this, we'll have to spray paint two or three coats on here probably. And then I'm going to use this same sand pack paper, this 220 or maybe 100. And, um, sorry, I was, I was asking my husband, he's manning the camera for me, um, to scuff up the edges a little bit so we can see this, this brown color underneath. So there might be some tight places in here. You kind of got to get the sandpaper in there. Some of these tighter areas. That's why you want to have something that's pliable or just the pan sandpaper by itself will work just fine. And I'll try to fast forward up the video through this. because I'm going to be roughing it up. And I want to see some of that wood at the end when I scuff it up. So if there's a few places that I have missed that will make the paint easier to come off and give it a more weathered aged 
farmhouse kind of feel, which is kind of what I'm going for on this piece. Now, if you don't want that look, you'll definitely want to sand it very well with the smooth, get all the shiny stuff off that you can. And that way, none of your, you won't have to worry about your paint chipping off. Okay. I think that's got it pretty good. I'm going to clean off my area now and get this propped up on some blocks and we'll come back and um, I'll show you how to spray paint it. Okay, I've got it wiped down. I'm ready to start spray painting. So the first thing you want to do with your spray paints is whatever brand you're using, you're going to have to shake them up for a couple minutes to get the paint mixed up well in the can, okay? I'm going to paint the hinges with uh, Krylon Black Matte Max Ultimate Coverage. Um, I don't know if it has a number. 9198 Matte Black. I prefer the matte spray paints, but I didn't have a matte for my table, so I'm going to use a satin ivory. And this is a uh, Krylon. It has paint and primer mixed in. This is an indoor-outdoor paint. This is an indoor outdoor paint. So this one is 3443 Satin Ivory. Okay, so the first thing I want to do before I paint is flip the table over because I don't want the paint getting inside there. I could tape it, but it's really just easier to flip it over and put it raised up on a couple of blocks of wood. And the lid, I'm going to do the same thing. So the black is going to be for the screws, and I'm not going to paint them, the screws and the hinges, until I get this spray painted. Okay? So shake it up really well. I'm going to put on a mask, because you don't want to inhale any of the mist that comes out of the spray cans. It's not good for you. So hopefully you'll still be able to hear me well. I'll try to talk really, really loud while I have this mask on. Okay, you probably can't hear me at all. I'm talking really loud, can you hear me? All right, let me adjust the mic. Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay, my husband, he's over there letting me know if he can hear me or not. Okay, all right, there we go. Okay, I've got my microphone adjusted so you can hear me. So, every now and then while you're spray painting, you still want to shake your can. You wanna make sure it stays mixed in there. You don't want to hold your spray can in one area or get very close to your project. You want to be out about four to six inches and in a sweeping motion from one side to the other apply a nice misting coat. Light coats are better as I always say in my other projects. Lighter coats you might have to do more but you get a much smoother finish and you'll be happy. If you spray too hard in one spot you're going to have runs and then you're just going to have to sand it all down and start all over. So you don't want to get run. So let me move the table. Sure that's loud. And I'll show you what I mean. I always like to spray on my cardboard to see how the paint's going to come out. So I'm going past it. Nice. Even coat. And that coat even looks like it's running. So let me shake it up some more. We don't want running like that. So when I put my second or third coat on, I'm going to try and fill that in. Okay, nice, thin, smooth coats. You're not going to get coverage the first time. Do not try to get coverage the first time because it's not going to happen. Your table legs. And I like the flat paints a little bit better in the can because I just like the finish of them better. But with the satin, you won't necessarily have to varnish. So just nice light coats. Alright, 
up now our tabletop. Let me put a coat on it. Nice, smooth coat. It's less, you're less likely to get runs when things are laying flat. Do my edges. Okay, I'm going to let this coat dry really well and apply another couple of coats. Can you see how that's running? That's running a lot. That is really running a lot. So I will try and smooth that in as I spray paint my next coat on there. So this is what you do not want to happen. So, But don't stress out if it does unless it is like rolling down the entire surface. Then you're, you know you're going to have to probably sand those run spots. So I'll see how it feels um, when it dries. If it feels really raised, I'll lightly sand just where those bumps are and finish on with my other two coats of paint. So um, I will come back when I get my other two coats on so you can see how it looks finished with. I did go ahead and do both sides of my tabletop and depending on the humidity in your area will determine how long it takes for your project to dry. I did put three coats on mine and I was able to get those runs taken care of. Which side was that on? I think it was this, no, this side. So you can't even tell there was runs in it now. So it's all good. All good. I did have to lightly sand those runs but uh, once I put my other two coats on it, it took care of the runs that was in it. So now I want to distress the edges. So let me, okay, oh, that's 220. Okay, I'm going to get a stronger, uh, more coarse sandpaper. Okay, so I've got some coarser grit uh, sandpaper here. I've got a 60 and a 100. Um, so I'm going to start with the 60 and see how well it does. I want to distress the edges. So all you're going to do is sand the edges and get them to look a little warm. So you may have to zoom in here, honey, and so they can kind of see the edges. I'll try to hold it here for a second. You're good? Okay. Maybe a thumbs up next time because yep. I don't know what this means. <laughs> Okay, so this, by the way, this is my husband's first time helping me with video recording, so you get to hear all of the, uh, I don't know what that means. So we're just going to distress all the edges as much as you want to distress them. So if you want to see more of that wood underneath, then distress them a little bit more. I like them to be a little bit more distressed. Your paint needs to really be dry, so I let this set for about an hour, maybe a little bit longer on the table because I did both sides of the top, but it's set for oh, oh, quite a bit. And again, that will take determine, you know, your area, how the humidity is. taken off here. This is the back. Okay, now another tip I want to give you on spray painting is you're going to have a lot of overspray. So you need to be in an area that you don't have to worry about um, your overspray damaging something. And a well ventilated area is very important. All right, let's rough up some edges on the table and on the legs. Uh, see that? Can you zoom in on that, babe? I really like how that looks very distressed right there. So you distress it how you want. If you don't want to distress it at all, then don't distress it. That's completely up to you. I'll do this one leg here, finish it out, and then I'm going to go off camera and sand the rest of it. And uh, come back and I want to add a little bit of um, antiquing wash to it and, and 
heat it up just a little bit more than just what sanding will do to it. So I'll be back when I get this all sanded. Okay, I've got it all sanded now. I'm going to wipe the sanding dust. I'm going to fly bugging me. I'm going to wipe the sanding dust off of it because I want to antique it a little bit more. Now, right here, this the way this looks is a perfectly really nice distressing. So I'm going to have my husband zoom in so you can see the edges here and on the legs and stuff, and you can see the distressing a little bit better. how you can see the wood coming through and the good thing about using a spray paint that has a satin finish is that you you do not have to varnish this now it's done it's varnished and uh, it's got its finish on it and it's good to go um, just put it back together and use it but are you done the, okay all right so um, I want to add a little bit more of a distressed dirty look to it so I'm going to use this Deco Arts Vintage Wash Effects. This is black. Comes in a lot of colors. I don't think my microphone was up. There we go. Comes in a lot of colors. So um, this one is black and I'm going to show you how to use it. First I want to tell you that uh, you shake it well and apply your faux finish to your uh, project with either a brush, a sponge, or a rag. You can put it over raw wood or painted surfaces. Remove any excess that you don't want on there. Um, you can do two coat coverage if you want. It's light fast. It's self sealing. It's water based. It's permanent. Soap and water cleanup mask. Good product. So I'm going to grab my dry rag and put a little bit of this on. apply it on the um, lid here and just make it even more weathered and worn looking and you do not have to put this on if you don't want to I'm going to put it all over the top and then I'm going to remove some of it I know it looks pretty rough right now Pretty messy, pretty sloppy. So I'm going to grab my wet rag. Hopefully it's still wet. It's been out here for a while. And I'm going to rub and remove some of this product. And really give this a super aged look. And the, the grooves and stuff that were in the wood before I spray painted it, it's going to work itself into those and really make the distress look so awesome. I think that looks great. And you, you can oops go back. You can just keep rubbing this and removing as much as you want. Apply another coat. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna do the rest of the table off camera, come back and show you the finished product. Then we're going to go inside and do a stencil on the lid. Okay, we've got it all um, antiqued, just like I like it. And it's ready to either use or to stencil. I don't have to varnish this if I don't want to because the spray paint had a satin varnish in it. And the Vintage Effects Wash had a, um, had a, a varnish type stuff. It has its own sealer in it as well. So it's almost like a stain. Really like that product, and it comes in a multitude of colors. So we are going to head upstairs and stencil the top, head up to my studio. I made a stencil specifically for this piece, so we're going to go upstairs to my studio and stencil it and finish this project up. Okay, we're back inside in my studio, and we're going to finish out the top of this table. Now, um, if you're just doing a regular table that has a top that you can't remove, then, you know, uh, You'll have to just do it at, in an area where you can get it done easily. But I was lucky that this had a top that was removable, so I made a stencil specifically for this top. And um, 
I'll bring it over here. And I've got it on top of a blue piece of paper so that you can see it. Farmer's Market Lemons. But if you don't want to do lemons on your top, then you can um, put some tape or just do the farmer's market. Make sure you mark the lemons off. Tape them off so you don't get any uh, paint on it. And just do the farmer's market part. And you could put my um, chicken in there in the middle of the farmer's market. That would be super cute. And this stencil does come in two sizes comes in a smaller size, larger size, and you could stencil on the lemons with an undercoat of uh, light buttermilk and then paint them in with your yellows and greens and that would be super pretty. But we're just going to use just plain black paint on this. So I want to get it centered on my project here. I'm going to kind of eyeball it. I'm not going to be too particular about it, but if you are um, you know, worried about it being exact, then you can definitely measure it. I'm going to tape it at the top in a couple of places and stencil it in with black. And I want to give you guys some tips on some of the products that I used out in my husband's shop. And um, you'll have to apologize for the video. That was his first time, him helping me, and I think he did an awesome job. For never done it, doing it before. All right, I'm going to dampen this sponge. This is just a sponge pouncing tool, and I just want it slightly damp. That just makes it easier for the paint to come out of it when I go to clean my sponge. And grab some of this paint, and we're just going to pounce this in. It still has just a tiny bit too much water in it. Let me get that out. And black paint, everything's going to get black paint because I really want this um, table to be all kind of black and white. And um, I really like some of the farmer's market stuff. I think it is really, really fun. And you want to keep your, your paint thin layers. Don't get too much paint too quick. We're putting lemons on this one. So we just want to pounce the paint everywhere. The whole stencil will be black paint. Not, I'm not adding color to mine, but um, if you're doing a table or a bread box or um, any kind of old box that you want to dress up, you can definitely paint your design in the center in with a color. And what a cute idea to do for a gift if you find a table somewhere or, you know, like I said, a box or something that, um, I mean, farmer's market stuff is really popular stuff right now. Okay, I've got one pretty thin coat on there. I'm going to start back at the lemons. So that was, my uh, pouncer was a little wet up there, so I want that to dry a little bit and just up and down, straight up and down pouncing. We don't want to um, mush it or push it. And you can use a stencil brush. It's perfectly fine. I'm going to try and have some nice crisp edges on our stencil. We don't want any bleed under. And I'm worried about that up there since my pouncer was a little bit too wet. So we'll see when I lift the stencil up how it looks. And I'm okay, really, if it doesn't have complete coverage on all the letters. That makes it look even more old and worn out. And I really like that look. 
So you could just pounce it on here once and lift it up. Let's see how it's looking. Oops. Drop it back down on it. Yeah, I really messed up my lemons. Grab a brush, see if I can clean that up. Not a problem if it doesn't clean up, but it can stay a little messy for an older, more distressed look. And it's really not completely covered up here, but up here my my pouncer was too wet. So I'm going to go ahead and take my stencil off before I drop it on there again. And then I'll take it and clean it. I haven't cleaned my chicken stencil yet either, so I'm going to take my damp brush and clean up some of this edges along here. I don't mind it looking rough, but I don't want it super like I didn't stencil well, kind of rough, like those letters really look a little rough. Okay, get that water off of there. Looking pretty good. It's a little rough around the edges because I had my pouncer too wet, so don't don't get your pouncer too wet. But it looks very distressed up here and down here, and I love that look. I love it a lot. And I could go back and sand a little bit of that off if I wanted to, but I think it looks great. So this is going to be my tabletop. It's it's a super quick, easy. Um, design here that I've created for this top, but you can do so much more with it. I antique the, the corners a little bit more, um, which I have plenty of paint here. I might do that real quick. Just give it a little bit extra antiquing on the edges. Now I want uh, to get this uh, paint dry. We just used um, Deco Arts Lamp Black on it. And I want to get it good and dry, and then um, even though the spray paint and the um, Vintage Effects wash, I did not need to um, varnish on. I will varnish on it now because um, I've applied that, uh, that Deco Art paint on it. So I'm just going to antique up the edges a little bit more, just with this paint. And I've got way too much water in my brush. So I'm going to take my Just a little bit. I got lots of water. Okay, that's looking pretty good right there. I like the way that looks. I think it looks great. Okay, I have decided that I am going to paint my lemons. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit on my lemons. I'm going to bring my stencil back because I like them black, but after I put it in my room, I decided I wanted a little pop of color on here. So I'm going to lay my stencil back on here and tape it in place. And we're just going to paint over those black lemons. With some buttermilk. And again, we're just going to use our pouncer. And 
repaint the lemons in with this buttermilk. I still want to keep these a little more uh, muted in color because I made this piece look pretty old and worn so we're going to try and paint the lemons in to look the same. Straight up and down, pouncing. Just kind of work that paint into the surface. Try to stay out of your lemon letters. And let's see how this looks. Okay, I got a little bit of edges there that I'm gonna have to touch up with a brush. So let me grab a paintbrush and Stencil over to the side there. Okay, I'm just gonna clean up the edges here. Just a little bit. I'm not gonna worry too awful much about some of it because it can work in our favor. Okay. We're going to let that dry so we can come in and add some color onto this. Okay, so we're going to draw some shapes in here for our lemons. So I'm just going to kind of find where the edge is. And then this lemon comes over here. got some guidelines there for where our lemons should be. So let's begin by painting them in. So I'm going to put some antique gold out on my palette. Now we want to keep these colors, you know, a little more on the muted side. Mix just a tiny little bit of that buttermilk in with it and we'll base coat in our lemons. Keep them a little more toned down. I'm going to go out to that edge where it's kind of dark. Okay, so we've got our first lemon here. Our shape anyway. antique gold and a little bit of that buttermilk. And now that I'm painting my lemons in, I have not quite decided if I want to go in and lightly sand all of my painting on here to really make it look a little more aged and worn. And that is definitely going to be a personal preference on your part because I, I like the more weathered and aged look on things. So 
So we've got a little bit of a darker color for our lemons. So let's do the same for our leaves. So we're going to start with some... Let's start with some thicket. It's a little bit of a more muted color. And a tiny little bit of our buttermilk. And we'll paint our leaves in. it with a little bit of, of the uh, buttermilk that we undercoated these in so we can keep our colors a little bit more on the muted side. Okay, that's some good base color there for our leaves. So let's work on shading our lemons. Actually, let's work on adding some dots on our lemons. Some little aging of color. So I'm gonna put on my palette some burnt umber and some Snow White, and we have our Thicket on there, or our um, Antique Gold already. So I'm going to take my Antique Gold and just put a few little characteristics in here. a few. We're going to still keep this kind of almost retro looking. I'm going to add just a couple of burnt umber in here. Kind of thin. We don't want a lot. I want those to dry. I'm going to put a second coat on my leaves while that dries with the thicket and a little bit of <clears throat> buttermilk. Excuse me. Take care of our leaves till we're ready to detail those in. So I'm going to erase my lines on my lemons here if I can. If I haven't painted over them, I can. Oops. I want to get the green paint there. If I've got paint on them, then I can't erase them. So if they don't erase, it's because the paint is on them. Alright, let's start shading on our. <clears throat> lemons <clears throat> with the straight antique gold. We'll shade the bottoms here. And this is where you can smooth out any edges and shapes. Just side load the antique gold.
A little bit of paint goes a long ways here. I do want to try and cover up my buttermilk as best I can, though. Okay, we're going to add a new color in here, which is a very bright color, so we'll see if I like it, because I don't want these to be super bright. This is cad yellow, and it is a super bright color. So, of course, I'm going to mix it with my buttermilk to tone it down. And it's also a pretty transparent color. So, let's add some highlights on here. Kind of walk it down there a little bit. A little bit of water. This is just going to get a little bit of a highlight up here on the very tip of that one. Last one here. All right, we're just keeping those colors very, very muted on there. We don't, we don't want super dark colors. We might eventually add super dark colors, but for now we are not going to. So I'm going to take a little bit of the thicket and a little bit of burnt umber. Darken the green. Let's see if we antique gold, if that makes it a little bit more of a dirty color. There we go. So you want the thicket, burnt umber, and antique gold. Make yourself a dirty green there. this color at the base of our leaves. It's just a dirty green color. Thicket, burnt amber, antique gold. I dipped one time in each color to, to make that color. Just a tiny bit more of the burnt umber in there. Our second layer on here. Mix up more as you need it. Slightly darker. Okay. That's a nice color on there for our leaves. Let's go back to our lemons while our leaves are drying. And I'm going to take a wash of this cadmium yellow which is mostly water. You're just tinting the water here. And we'll wash this over. Make sure your highlight is completely dry.
Maybe we're keeping these old and retro, but if you want them to look new, if you're not making yours old and retro and you want it to look more new, you can use uh, brighter colors on here. Okay? Alright, let's go back to our leaves. I want to highlight. I'm not sure that this is going to give me a good highlight color, so let's add some cad yellow, white, and thicket together and get a lighter green. First, I want to put my vein down the center, so I'm going to go back to that thicket and burnt umber and antique gold mix and create a center vein. Maybe just a tiny bit more of the burnt umber because I want that to be just a little bit darker. Grab me a filbert brush, a small one here, and do our leaves again. So we want the white, cad yellow, and thicket, and probably a couple of cad yellows to make that a little bit of a brighter green. Get the moisture out of my brush, and we're just going to touch the edge and flick some highlights onto these. Just at an angle towards the center. I still want this to look old and kind of retro-y. aren't quite dry but I think they're dry enough to add a highlight of white on here. Just a little stroke of white. And let me turn this. This is a pretty big piece. Kind of work that into a little bit more narrow A solid line on this edge. I want it to be a little more broke up. Keep it up here. I think I'm going to take my antique gold back along the bottom here. Clean up my edge. Okay, let's make a super bright green if we can. And let's make a wash of it. It's still a muted bright green. And we'll wash this over our leaves.
it's too much water. And we'll put a little bit of this. I'm going to wash my brush and side load on to that washy green. And put a little bit of this color. Maybe I'll use this green. I want it to show up a little bit more on here. Just some little tints of green on there. And then my cat yellow, I want to put some little tints of that on my leaves. Then we'll zoom out and see how it looks because I think that's going to be um, pretty retro enough for me. spot on the leaves and that one is still super wet. Okay, I think those are looking pretty um, old. Let's wide angle out. And yeah, so to make them look even older, we can take our Vintage Effects wash and wash over them if we want to. most of the moisture out of my brush and just kind of lightly put this over dirty it up give it a little bit more of an older retro look. You want to make sure everything is dry and I'm just barely tickling this on there. If I get outside of my design here I'm just going to take my finger and clean that up. line strokes out of there and I think that looks pretty good looks um, pretty aged I kind of like it but like I said if you don't want yours to look as kind of aged like mine the more muted colors you can brighten it up brighten up the colors and make it a little bit brighter so I think that will finish um, this design um, I did oops, Straighten this up here. I did wash around the outside with just the regular lamp black, but you could use the Vintage FX wash too and just darken up around the outer edges here. Just a wash of color. Okay, so 
to finish this for use. Now, if it's a table you're not going to use a whole lot of, you don't have to varnish it. But you can use just about any varnish. But my go-to varnish for furniture, because I know it's going to have things sitting on it and scraping across it and stuff like that. And if I want my design to stay on there well, then I will apply a couple of coats of polycrylic uh, clear satin. That's going to be to protect this painted area. Not so much for out here because this already has its own protection. I am going to cover the whole piece, but the purpose of it is more for the painted area. So two or three coats of this, and you want to do thin coats with a dampened artist sponge. and Just apply them and uh, stroke down this way, apply a coat going this direction, and then apply a coat going this direction. If you've got a spray finish, a Krylon spray finish, you can uh, take it into a ventilated area and put a couple of coats of that on there. Now, um, this you can buy at Walmart. It's water-based. Clear satin is the kind I like. You don't want to shake it. You want to stir it with like a stick or a dowel rod or something and gently stir it to get it uh, blended in there. So. Um, that is how we're going to finish this. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about the uh, spray paint that we used. Okay, they're both Krylon products. Okay, so this one is matte black and this one is satin ivory, like I said, uh, outside while I was spraying. And the numbers are black is 9198 matte black and the satin ivory is 3443 satin ivory. So those are the colors, but the main thing I want to talk to you about is the nozzles on these bottles, the difference between the two. Okay, so this one has a very fat nozzle on it. Okay, this one you can spray in any direction. You can spray it sideways, you can spray it upside down, you can, you know, spray it however you want and it never gets clogged, okay? This is the, the new uh, spray tip that they have on most of their cans and this one you do not have to clear out. This one you do have to clear out. You cannot spray it upside down. You can spray it straight up and at an angle pretty well depending on how empty the can is. Um, but this one you do have to clear out or it will get clogged. So to clear it out you turn it upside down and you spray the nozzle. I usually spray it onto a piece of paper. Spray it until no more paint comes out of it and then it's cleared out. But you have to do that every single time that you use it. When you're done painting something, you have to clear this nozzle out or it will get clogged. This one, you do not have to. So I really wanted to let you know the difference between uh, the nozzles on these. And um, so you know exactly how to uh, use your spray paint. Okay, I think we're going to call this a finished project. I hope that you guys enjoyed painting this with me. I really enjoyed doing this one. And my intention was to keep my lemons black, but now that I have painted them, I really like this project even more. So I'm going to get it varnished and get it uh, attached back to my table and put it back in the room so I can use it. Thanks so much for painting with me, everybody. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.